Well, I didn't expect to see this today. Um, maybe I should have, but Nintendo's kind of weird when they talk about gaming anniversaries. Uh, they, they focus a lot on like Mario and Zelda. Uh, I mean, the Metroid last time Metroid had an anniversary kind of just came and went without Nintendo even talking about it. So Nintendo doesn't really celebrate the anniversary of all of their IPs that much. Uh, but they're doing something. They're actually doing something that's very interesting uh, right now. Uh, on the 30th anniversary of Fire Emblem. And maybe it's just because Fire Emblem's now become a much bigger deal to Nintendo since Awakening uh, back on 3DS all the way up through Three Houses here on Switch, which is a fantastic game, by the way. I really enjoy it. So maybe Nintendo is uh, trying to uh, give, uh, you know, basically Fire Emblem its day in the sun um, because they, they did a couple interesting things. First off, uh, they announced that the Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light is coming to Nintendo Switch fully localized for the first time on 12-4. So December 4th. Uh, this has never come to the United States. I don't believe it's come anywhere west. It's never been fully localized officially. There's been fans translations, of course. They announced that's out there. You've been seeing the trailer here. All that jazz. Pretty great stuff. But beyond that, um, they have awesome crap coming here. All right, so they're doing this 30th anniversary collector's pack, which I need to get my hands on. Holy crap. Uh, it comes with, uh, I think, five items. So it comes with a Nintendo Switch download code for Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light game, uh, which it, it's an NES game, guys. I mean, you know, it, it's not going to be something, you know, they didn't remaster it or anything. It's just localized, a localized NES game. Um, a Legend of Arc Anea Deluxe art book. I hope I pronounced that right. I might have butchered it. I don't know, but it comes with an art book. I love art books for collector things. It's great. You get a lot of official art that often has not been released publicly, so that's really cool. Uh, you get Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade Light Replica Game Pack Art Piece. Uh, it looks like a glass replica NES uh, cartridge. See, it's not an actual cartridge, but it, it's in the shape of an NES cartridge with the original uh, logo on there and the original sticker. That looks really, really cool. That is a very nice art piece that I would love to have on my back wall collection. You guys see in some of my videos and live streams. Uh, you get a, a replica game box as well, including an instruction booklet, which is really cool. Uh, the protective sleeve and a world map. So basically, just like you would back in the day with the actual game, it's like bringing it back to its original form. However, obviously, download code versus a real cart. Uh, you also get a mini Nintendo Power Retro Collectible. So this is something that was included um, or, or would have been included with Nintendo Power back in the day. Obviously, Nintendo Power right now doesn't exist as a magazine. It has been brought back as a podcast for those that, that aren't aware. Um, that happens pretty randomly at this point. Uh, but it is a podcast that, that is uh, something that you know Nintendo employees go on here and there. It's been a bit wonky this year in 2020, but yeah, dude, uh, this Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light 30th Anniversary uh, Collection Pack is amazing. Now, uh, in, in terms of cost, you know, these collector's packs are always uh, fairly pricey. Um, so they have, this, they have this listed on their, on their website. Uh, the actual game is only going to be $6. So you'll be able to, to, to get it on the eShop, 6 bucks. This is not something they're throwing out for free on the NES app. Unfortunately, uh, for those people that, that have the NES app and Nintendo Switch Online, it does feel like something that maybe should be thrown on there because it is an NES game, but they're trying to do something special with it. I also find it interesting that they're releasing it on the eShop uh, because this is what Virtual Console was. Like, you got old school games for a set price. So you can actually own this game, not just get it through a service. Is this a sign that Nintendo's rethinking this whole Nintendo Switch Online subscription thing? Is this a sign in the future we're going to get more Virtual Console? I, I don't know, but this is something that they're doing, and it's $6, and it's never been available in the West. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know how much the collection pack costs right now, uh, because it's not listing. They don't have a price listed at the moment. Um, you know, when, when they link to it officially, it just goes to the Fire Emblem, uh, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light Switch thing, which is, is six bucks. 
Uh, they don't have anything uh, listed physically yet. Obviously, we'll have to wait to see this pop up on retailers. If it is up at the time of me putting this video up, like on Amazon or something, I'll put an affiliate link down in the description for you guys to pre-order it because gosh knows I would love this as well. I mean, this between this and the Ori stuff coming out in December, I mean, man, there, there's a lot of cool physical stuff coming out for these games. Uh, but I'm happy that Nintendo is recognizing the 30th anniversary of Fire Emblem. I just find it curious how Nintendo decides to make these choices on which anniversaries and which games they're going to celebrate anniversaries for. Uh, you know, it, it's just they, they don't always do stuff like this. So I'm glad they are. And I'm glad that they did choose to localize a game that's never been localized before. Uh, obviously, it is something easier for Nintendo to do, especially during the pandemic, uh, instead of creating like a collection pack or a new a Fire Emblem game, uh, obviously I think there is some thought process that they could have done like a Fire Emblem collection pack, and that might have sold well as well, but you know, it, it's good to have every Fire Emblem game actually playable in English in the West officially, and I believe Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light is technically the first uh, Fire Emblem game to come out that just never came out West, so uh, you know, it says play the Famicom Classic that started the Fire Emblem Legacy localized for the first time. You get to meet Marth and recruit some of the most beloved Fire Emblem characters in 8-bit glory as you play through 25 chapters of the classic Famicom tactical role-playing game localized and released for the first time in North America. Uh, and it, it, This is a limited time release, apparently. I don't know what it is with Nintendo and their limited time releases, but they're continuing that trend. Uh, I don't know how long this is released for because it just says it comes out on 12.4. They don't really tell you how long it's going to be uh, limited. So we're not sure how long it's going to be available. So get it while you can. Gosh knows, I'll probably at least pick up the digital copy if I can't get my hands on uh, that collector's edition, which is what I really want. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm excited that we, we get to do it. Uh, there's over 50 playable characters. Yes, 50 playable characters back in the NES days, believe it or not. Um, you know, you get to pick units and class units to the missions at hand and approach characters on the battlefield to forge relationships and even add to your army. I mean, this stuff was happening back on the, like, stuff that's a staple with Fire Emblem started back on the NES. Uh, make a mistake or lose a favorite unit. New features like save states and rewind let you tailor the challenge to your playstyle. So, back in the day, how Fire Emblem originally worked, the, there wasn't, like, this classic mode or there wasn't, you know, an easier mode. Like, characters, when they died in the game, they died and that was it. Now, they didn't add, you know, a new mode that, you know, they didn't add, like, a, a, a new friendly mode or something that, so your characters don't don't die. But uh, what they did do is add save states, which is something they've done to all the NES games on the NES Classic, uh, and a rewind feature. So, uh, basically, if you mess up and your character dies, you can rewind the game a little bit or go back to a previous save state and then, uh, you know, be able to load right in and not lose your character. So the game still plays the way it always has. They've just made it play like it does on emulation, and I'm, like, 99.9% .9 sure this game is being emulated on, on, on the Switch. Like, there's no reason for them to actually run it locally on Switch hardware when an emulator can get the job done, and it's something that they could reuse uh, for other games and have used for other games already. So, yeah, this is cool. Um, you know, it's a, it's a one player game, no multiplayer here. It's only 30 megabytes in size, which is, I mean, all of us, I think could squeeze that on our switches. If we, even if you only have the 32 gig internal, I'm sure we could find a free 30 megs, uh, to get it in there. I mean, there's they're save files for games that are larger than that. Uh, but yeah, the, the only languages that are supported are English and Japanese. So this doesn't seem to be something that's been localized to a whole bunch of different languages, specifically targeted, obviously, for uh, North America, United States. Thank thankfully, uh, the Switch is region-free, so if this isn't coming to certain countries but you do happen to speak English, the Switch is region-free. So you could just hop on the North American eShop or get someone, get, get a friend to buy it for you, all that jazz. Uh, this is just really cool. I like that Nintendo's doing this, and who knows? Uh, maybe on uh, the launch day of December 4th, maybe we'll, we'll give away a few copies of it just because we can. It's cheap and it's easy, and there's going to be people that are going to want to play it. And in fact, you know, maybe on December 4th, let me check the date here. Uh, December 4th lands on, uh, let's see, lands on a Friday. Maybe on that Friday, uh, we'll do a special uh, live stream of this game or other or, or Fire Emblem Three Houses as well. Kind of like maybe 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 we'll start with Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, and then we'll go over to Fire Emblem Three Houses and kind of show where the series began and where the series is now. I think that might be a really cool thing to do for the 30th anniversary. And doing it on release date of that game would be, I, I think, make a lot of sense. So 
Um, yeah, I guess we'll do. A, we'll, we'll plan a game live stream for that. If you want to uh, enjoy that live stream, be sure to head over to Twitch at twitch.tv slash Nintendo Prime TV because that is where the 30th anniversary live stream will be taking place. I do all my gameplay live streams over there, so there's extra live streams. Like, you might enjoy the streams we do on YouTube. We have extra live streams over there that are gameplay only, uh, so be sure to go check that out. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for checking this out. This is a really cool announcement. I did not plan to have this happen this morning. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.